I've got some things that I wanted to just share with you uh, in, in regard to your life, in regard to what, what you're doing in life and what you're becoming. You know, what's so sad to me is people who live their life through and never discover who they are. Isn't that amazing? You hear people talking about that, well, I'm trying to find myself. Well, I, I understand that, but a lot of people never do. It's like they, they live their life through someone else, they, they, through maybe some characters that they watch on television or under the peer pressure of somebody else that kind of tells them who they are and what they're supposed to be like. But I, I just want to talk to you about your identity for a few moments. Uh, I, th I think the next few, well, I, I would say throughout the rest of this year and probably even beyond is going to be, is going to be incredibly important for your life. Now, real quickly, let me just say, Jim, good to see you. Uh, Esther, thank you for joining with me. I so much appreciate you taking time. Uh, I, gosh, I'd like to just welcome every one of you that's coming. Uh, this, is, this is, to me, it's such a special time and something I really look forward to. Uh, I, I want to quickly say that we're, we're taking all of the things that you're watching, we're taking putting these things on YouTube. And that way you can kind of pull them up from time to time as you need them. Because I'm discussing some things that's vital for your life. I promise you, it is, it's huge. Uh, when, because the understanding of who you are is probably the most important thing that you can embrace. It's, it's, not, it's not just a matter of, I mean, we don't really have a problem with finding out who God is. We know who God is. God is omnipotent. He, we, we know about Jesus Christ, we know about the angels, we know about heaven, but we don't know very much about ourselves. You know that that's the first thing that God tried to establish in us? When we became believers, and I'm speaking to those of you Christians, the first thing he tries to establish in you was your identity. He tried to establish that, and that was the very first thing that was under attack. Isn't that the truth? I mean, first thing is, is he tries to establish you and says you are a son you're a daughter. Uh, but there's, there's a voice of opposition that comes and says, you're nothing, you're unworthy, you're, you're a worm, you're a, you're a whatever, whatever it is the standard is, you're, you're substandard. You know what I'm saying? And, and so people live that way. And the problem is, is that it's somehow the acknowledgement or the receiving of that position in which you see yourself actually opens or closes doors for you. That's why a lot of people, they never escape the boundaries of, of uh, their oppression or their, the, the weight that they carry, all of the things, because they're never able to establish who they are. It's like about the time I see it, boy, this is gonna be great. I really believe God's got something wonder for me, wonderful for me, but I don't deserve that. You know, I know. I, I don't deserve it, and I don't know why God would do that for me. And, oh, God, if you would just do that. Even the prayers, they get kind of a desperate prayer of, oh, God, if, if you would just please do this because I've done this and I've done that. See, we, we try to earn it based on our ability to do things rather than based on the foundation of our identity. Listen to me. Your identity is the collapse of your life. You don't have all of the, if, if you would eliminate this hurdle and if you would find out who you are, I'm telling you, it would change everything for you, everything in your life. I think that's God's greatest challenge. God's number one challenge is, I mean, he took you immediately. You became born again. You became a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things are of God. You've been clothed in the righteousness or the right standing of God through Jesus Christ. Uh, he who knew no sin became sin for me that I might become the righteous. I mean, the, the scriptures just go on and on and on about your identity, but yet we allow ourselves to be tricked into thinking, well, I'm not that, and if I'm not that, why should God listen to me? I'm just telling you, this, this, is, this is a trap. 
if you can if you can hear what I'm saying, this is the trap, and probably it has defined you in more ways than you know. You know, I, I, let me just ask you a question: What is defining you right now? What what defines you? I mean, uh, I'm talking about what you like, where you live, what you buy. All of that's defined by something. It can be something that is is uh, uh, has to do with uh, peer pressure. It could have something to do with you know, but something is defining you, who you like. I determined it's back a few years ago. I was doing my bucket list, and uh, the bucket list was something that I thought was really important because to have a bucket list basically tells me who I am. You know, I want these things because this is the person I am. A lot of times the things you would see in a bucket list merely is a reflection of what's really in your heart. So I'm kind of curious to know what is it that you really want and why do you want that? So I began to work on my bucket list of the places I wanted to go, the things I wanted to see. And it was amazing because once I got into it, I determined I don't know that I want to do that. I mean, there was a number of things that I wrote down that, that after I came back to it later, I thought, you got to be kidding me. I'm not doing that. There is, there is no way. I don't, I don't want that. Um, you know, I, I in the process also um, got a favorites list. Now, let me explain to you what the favorites list meant. Uh, it started out where at a time... When, whenever I was uh, in the process of this kind of self-discovery, um, someone asked me, they said, what's your favorite color? And, you know, I didn't know. Now, I didn't say I didn't know. I just kind of blurted out and said, well, I like all colors. I just, yeah, I like all of them. And that's not true. That just simply isn't true. What's my favorite color? I like all. And finally, I thought, okay, okay, okay. Um, blue. All right, blue, I settled that thing right there. Blue is my favorite color. And then they threw another monkey wrench into the works and they said, what color blue? Well, I don't know what color blue. Well, in the process, I started thinking about it and I thought, there's a lot of things about me I don't know. What is my favorite place? What is my favorite car? What is my favorite city? What's my favorite food? I mean, you get to where you just kind of go through and take whatever somebody else hands you. But I was so curious to know about what my favorite was. I remember back a number of years ago, there was a movie called Runaway Bride. I don't know if you ever saw that. It was Richard Gere and ah, I can't remember. Um, can't remember who it was. But anyway, he was a reporter and this was a lady who would get right to the, the altar to be married and she would panic and run away. Well, she had done this so many times because she was a beautiful, a beautiful girl. She had done this so many times that, that uh, it kind of became newsworthy, okay? And so he went in as a reporter and as a result, he, he, he fell for her. He fell in love with her. And, uh, you know, he was talking and he noticed something and there was a point brought up in this thing because they asked what kind of eggs that she liked. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Rachel. Yes, that was Julia Roberts. You guys ought to see it. But they asked, they asked what kind of, uh, they asked what kind of eggs that she liked. And, uh, she said, well, I like them this way. But as it turned out, she liked him that way because the last guy that she was with, that's the way he liked him. And basically, he told her, this is the way you like him. And with each guy that she was going to marry, she liked eggs the way that he did. And at the end of the movie, it was like one of those statements that comes out and she said, I found out I like my eggs this way. But it wasn't based on anybody else. It was, it was based on uh, what she liked. And I think that there's a, there's a real message in that to us is the fact that a lot of times we're basing our identity on somebody else, what somebody else thinks, the peer pressure. We buy our vehicles, our clothes because of what somebody, I mean, listen, I've seen people wear stupid things because they thought it was acceptable or current. 
and I'm thinking, you look like a clown. You look like an idiot in that. But, but they would allow themselves, and even they thought later, they thought, why was I wearing that? Well, they're doing it because that was, that was is almost like the peer pressure of shaping their identity. And so, you know, I, I, think, I think one of the big questions that says, are we true to ourselves? Do we know who we are? I, I promise you, you will not be successful in life because you'll never be anchored in who you are until you determine who you are. You'll always be manipulated by someone else. You'll always be controlled by someone else. You need to have the confidence in yourself as to who you are, what you like, where you're going, and what you want to accomplish. And, and so I, I would like to, I'd, I'd kind of like to, I don't know that I can give you homework for this, but, but I, I would like to see you develop a favorites list. Now, what I did in my favorites list, I'm trying to remember because this has been back a little while ago, um, I, I put things down, what music did I like? Now, I didn't stop there with what music did I like. I went to every genre of music, blues, jazz, classical, uh, even rap. I searched for weeks and weeks trying to find a favorite song in rap. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not mine, but I wanted to find uh, my favorite in every area. You know, and those are questions we don't ask ourselves. What's your favorite song? Well, I don't know. Well, what, what's your favorite place? Well, I don't know. I started writing down what kind of music I liked. Uh, I wrote down what my favorite city was. I wrote down what my favorite food was. My, I mean, every, every, favorites of everything that you could think of. And what it did was, is it, it really uh, capsuled who I was as a person. You understand? It, and, and really what's going to make you strong enough to be successful isn't just what you do. It's who you are. You know, if you don't know who you are, you will continually fluctuate from the pressure on this side and the pressure on that side. And, and, and you're not sure depending on, depending on your surroundings. You know, that's one of the big problems with young people is the fact that they get caught up in peer pressure and they end up being influenced by somebody to get on drugs. Well, they don't want drugs. I mean, seriously. I don't know whether any of you remember the first time you ever drank alcohol or the first time you ever smoked a cigarette. I mean, and if you can remember back that far, maybe some of you, it happened last week, I don't know. But the first time you did it, let me just tell you something, it was awful. It was terrible. I mean, really. Who in their right mind <laughs> would try to choke that down? I had some people that they would dip. <laughs> and, and they got hooked on it. And, and boy, I'll tell you something. That's a, that's a hook that, that goes deep. But they, they told me the first time they ever tried it. And they gagged and gagged. But the fact is, is why, why would we do something like that? What is it? about something that we hate that we will force ourselves through to be a part of something, to look a certain way or whatever, it be, because we're letting someone else define us rather than for ourselves. See, who you are in life, that's how everybody responds to you, whether you know it or not. Do you know that people even buy you presents based on who you are, they, they buy you presents based on what you think of you and not what they think of you. For instance, let me just give you a, a, a little example. Um, I know a couple of guitarists that are amazing. Rick Carter is one of those. I, I love, I just listen to him. He's got so many great chord progressions. It's just, God, it's just beautiful. You know, you just, you just think, geez, it's just, it's gorgeous. And it's just a great jazz guitarist. And uh, I love to listen to him. And he knows guitars. He knows, he knows a good one when he, when he plays it, when he holds it, he knows it. Well, you know, if you were going to buy Rick 
a present and you think, well, I'm going to get him a guitar. You're not going to run down to Walmart and get some $39 or $69 guitar. You're going to say, he would never want this. Now see what I'm saying is you're buying something for him based on what he thinks of himself, not just what you think of yourself. And that's the same way in your life. People respond to you based on what you think of you, not just what they think of you. But most of the time, we don't know who we are. We don't know what we like. We don't know where we're going. We allow ourselves to be manipulated, controlled uh, at every area. And, and I'm just telling you something. If you go to the Bible, you'll find that the number one thing that God wanted to do in you was to establish your identity. Let me ask you something. Do you know who you are? Do you, do you know who you are? Uh, it's, it's important that you uh, be around people who care more for you than they do for themselves. And I know that's sometimes very difficult to find. Somebody who's going to talk to you based on their love for you rather than their love for themselves. Because uh, you need a friend that can help be honest with you, somebody that you can dialogue with, uh, somebody that you can talk to about things. Because iron will sharpen iron. And, and I really believe that we're coming into a season that you need to be sharpened for what you're going into. You, you can't be dull of hearing. You can't be dull going into this next season that we're about to go into. I believe it's that significant. And, and if I could push something with you today, it is to really back up from everything. You know, you're trying to drive a car. Why? Why do you want that car? What is it about that car that you want? Is it because you saw it in a magazine and therefore it makes you look cool? See, you're allowing someone else to define everything about And I know that, and a lot of people might say, well, that's inevitable because that's just where life is. I agree. I agree. We have been so inundated with uh, uh, advertisements until literally, uh, uh, I mean, tell, that's from the socks we wear to the hat we wear on our head. It's just, we're, it's almost like we let them tell us we're just mindless. But, but in life, you need to know, otherwise you'll get with the wrong person. You'll end up going in debt for stuff that you don't even like or that be committed to. I found out the older I'm getting, the more I'm finding out what I don't like. <laughs> I mean, I've had a whole list of stuff that I thought I liked, but as I'm getting older, I'm finding, I don't like that. There's no way. I, are you kidding? I don't want to do that. It's kind of like a bucket list. I, I don't want to do that. I remember I had on my bucket list to go skydiving, and I've got some dear friends that do skydive and love it. And I'm sure I probably would for that couple of moments, but I ain't seeing it. <laughs> I, I don't sit around and think, I think I want to go jump out of a plane. <laughs> You know, you, you know what I'm saying? So knowing who you are is huge. I want to encourage you to set aside all the things you're doing and look inside. Look inside and say, is this really who I am? Uh, is this really what I want to do? You know, I, and, and I'm not saying that that's bad. I mean, I've got some friends that do cross country uh, motorcycle riding and, it, and they have a blast, I'm telling you. I've said some that they would ship their motorcycles clear up to Canada and then drive them all the way down to Mexico. And it was a blast for them. But for me, I don't want to do that. I, I, I genuinely, and it's not that I'm thinking something's wrong with it. I just don't want to do it. And, and, and there are times when you'll do things because you love somebody. There's times when you'll concede, yes, I'll do this because I love you. And, but, but I'm talking about the true core of who you are as a person. That's the, because once that's settled, it will, it will, it'll do a clearinghouse on so many things in your life. And you'll find yourself eliminating things 
all of the excess noise and traffic that's continually running through your life. And so what you need to do is to really sit down and, and listen to your heart. And that's what I did. I, I sat down, I listened to my heart, and I'd come to the conclusions, you know what? Honestly, I don't want to do that. I, I, just, I, I don't want to. I really don't. I'm not saying that it's not good. I'm not saying that it's not fun. It just isn't me. And that's the big thing. You've got to find you. And, and once that's clear, once, once that's clear in your life, then suddenly you'll catch yourself streamlining in a direction that will take you to a great uh, place of flourishing of great opportunities because you're not going to be sidelined by a bunch of other nonsense that really doesn't matter. So, so that's what's on my heart today. And uh, I would love to hear from you. Um, you know, some, some of you, I, I would love just to hear your thoughts about some of this and, and please don't take it that I'm saying one thing is bad and one thing is good. That's not it at all. Uh, it, it's, it's not anything like that. It's just some things are going to fit you that don't fit me, but that's okay. It, seriously, that's that's okay because I don't love it or want to do it. Doesn't make it bad. I, I have friends that are great fishermen, but they don't invite me to go because they just know I don't. <laughs> I don't love it. I I don't, and and I don't know why. Maybe it was the fact that I was never raised around it. Maybe it was never that it never had an opportunity to become part of my DNA, but for some reason I don't, I don't, I, I don't. And, and I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm happy with that. I'll celebrate. I'll, I'll do all of the things that needed to be done, but, I, but I, I think I found some things about me that are very important. What about you? What, what is it about you? What are your boundaries? What are your desires? What does your bucket list look like? What are, what's your favorites list? What, what, is it, what is it that you love? Do you, do you know, do you, have you determined, yet? I, I love this. Do you really? Yeah, I, I really do. I love this. This, this brings, this, this is the juices of life. This, is, this brings joy to my heart. So many people don't know what that is, but you'll never be successful in life until you establish who you are, not who I am, not even who God is. He's okay. He knows who he is, <laughs> but who are you? Who are you? That's a good question, isn't it? Well, that's what I wanted to bring to you today. And, uh, I, I so much enjoy this. Hey, I want to tell you something as I, as, as I get out of here. Um, I want to tell you that uh, on Fridays, I'm trying to make this a question and answer. Those of you that have questions, some of you have sent in questions. I thought I was going to get to a whole lot more of them last week and did not do it. I only got to about five or six and then it was I ran out of time. But um, if you've got some questions or some things that maybe you would like to submit, for me to read and to answer. I'd be glad to do it. Um, I, I would love that. Please, please, you can either write them in the message below or send it to me uh, on Messenger, or you can you can uh, contact me at our church website, fwcelgin.com, fwcelgin.com. It's got a place there where you can contact me and also a lot of other resources and things that you can that you can hook up with me towards. So, so please do that. Now, I, one, one little caveat here I need to tell you about. I am in Florida this week. Yes, I am. <laughs> and it's awesome. I just, I wanted to find some beautiful place that I could sit down with you that was so peaceful. And if you can look in the background, you can see this gorgeous lake that I'm, that I'm right here on. I mean, it's, oh my gosh, I wish you were here. We would sit down and have a cup of coffee together. I promise, but I'm going to be here for a couple of days. I'll be coming in on Friday, but I'm thinking that my plane is going to be in the air 
at the normal time that I come to you, okay? And so if it is, and I, I'm, I'm, I may just have to bring you a late session on Friday. Just wanted you guys to know, and uh, I hope that doesn't cause too much of a problem, but I, I can't do anything about it. Uh, the, we just got the flights that we had set up to come home. Uh, they were, um, um, they, that, that's what we can get. I'm in Orlando. Orlando, Jane, I'm, and it's just, it's beautiful. I went, I went to uh, uh, look at some of the Disney properties today. Now, a lot of those are still closed because of the coronavirus, but man, you talk about somebody know, uh, that knew who they were. When, when you know who you are, what you do becomes crystal clear. You're not stammering from this to that to something else to something else. And uh, that I love to go and just look at the excellence of, of what somebody does who becomes a master craftsman. Hey, you know what? If you will, if you will really find out who you are, you'll, that's a first step toward moving toward being a master craftsman. It's powerful. It really is. It really is. Okay. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being my friend. And I really mean that. Uh, my time with you has more value to me than, than uh, I could ever express. And I appreciate you. Uh, if you would not mind, if you would please uh, push like uh, and then also share. And that's so easy to do. Come on, guys. It's so simple to do. It doesn't cost you anything. Push like, push share, and then leave a little message. Just leave a little comment. And that's something because I go through and I answer each one of the comments uh, that, that people send. All right? Well, I love you guys. Uh, again, thank you for being my friend. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow evening. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to go kick my feet back a little bit, pour another cup of coffee, and uh, enjoy my evening. Please do the same. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, okay? I love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.